Well, hey everybody. It's springtime. And I'm getting ready to put the chaparral back in the water. I'm going to go drain some coolant. We're going to see if my process for pre-filling the block when I winterized, whether that was, whether how well that worked. I think it was good, but we're going to find out. Let's see if we can get this to drain. Uh, we'll open up the uh, this one first. I got a pan underneath. Open up the single point drain and see what we get. Make sure it goes out. I got the front end jacked up enough, so it should go out the back. Looks like it will at that rate. As long as I don't go too far. Come on. I don't want it to drain into the bilge. Which is which is up to the front here. Make sure it all goes out the back. All right, so we'll give that a few minutes too. Okay, I've uh, finished draining the coolant out of the block and captured it all and measured it. And I got about a gallon. Normally my, my, my rough number is about 1.75 uh, gallons, a gallon and three quarts. Um, I came up about oh, about six, probably six ounces short. And last fall, I did drain a little bit off after I filled the block. I probably drained three or four ounces off, and so remaining the remainder of that would be, you know, I I'm going to guess I lost a little bit. That I trailered this a couple hundred miles between. Uh, here and storage and back and over some uh, challenging roads at times and uh, knowing how this block you know when when you turn the engine off you know the all the fluids drain down until the block ends up full at some level and I'm suspecting that as you move it I probably lost a few ounces into the exhaust over the road so I'm not worried about that I think the method works I think it's a good it's a good deal uh, the only other thing still to caution is um, refractometer. I measured my bottles after I drained it. Last fall, after a couple days, I drained a sample and I used the refractometer. And the answer at that point was that uh, the, it was about minus 40 to minus 42 freeze point. Um, when I measure these bottles today, I'm at about a minus 30 freeze point. And that suggests to me that somewhere up in the plumbing, even when you run with the earmuffs on and circulate through the system, that somewhere up in the, in the rubber hoses, I'm going to say, um, there must be some small amounts of water that get trapped and come down. And, you know, perhaps it was there at two days and it just hadn't, you know, I. I drained off at the bottom. Um, this is from the entire block now being drained. So I don't know how long it took, but there was some amount of dilution between the time I, you know, f from what I put in to what ended up in the block. So as you're deciding how, what your mix ought to be, uh, keep in mind, like I say, I lost probably, you know, 10 degrees Fahrenheit freeze point, uh, even though I pre-filled the block. It's what it is. I'm going to keep monitoring and watching it, but you just need to be aware. I'm finishing up the video for the spring prep on the boat. Uh, I've had a little bit of delay here because of my health things with the kidney stone and hurting my leg and stuff. So um, here's kind of the finish and the follow-up on it. And uh, you know we can follow along here. I got a, I've got a screen show going, and. Let's talk, let's talk about the final issues here and how it wraps up. So first of all, I mentioned a few minutes ago that um, I saw some dilution 
in my antifreeze when I drained the antifreeze. It wasn't as strong coming out of the block as it was in fall. And I even made a comment about uh, whether something was trapped up in the hoses or, or, or whatever. And so if you look at the, here, here's a picture of Mercury's uh, plumbing arrangement. And my concern was perhaps that up here at the top that you could have uh, water trapped in those hoses and it might drain down later um, and dilute things. Um, I'm not so sure whether that's the case or if there's maybe a little bit of residual water that remains in the block even after you drain it. Um, I did a, I'll call it a back of the envelope calculation with the, of the, the strength. Um, I run this, this is the minus 200 freeze point, uh, advertised freeze point material, propylene glycol. And I dilute it roughly 50%. I don't go quite 50%. And then I end up with about a minus 40. It's like, you know, it's like 45% dilution or something. It's not all the way to 50. Anyway, I went to their charts and looked at what it took to move from, you know, minus 40 to minus 30. And the answer is, for what I drain out, which is a gallon and three quarters, uh, it's about 10 or 12 ounces, roughly, of water. And I suppose it's possible that there's, you know, 10 or 12 ounces of water laying down in the bottoms of the water jacket, you know, down in the bottom of the casting that doesn't want to completely drain out. And if it were, it probably wouldn't freeze and hurt anything because it's, you know, it would be laying, laying somewhere and it wouldn't, uh, uh, wouldn't be able to expand and, and crack something. Just a theory, right? Um, but what happens is in fall down here at the bottom where it says the G that's where the where it drains and so I measure that in fall and I've got minus 40 which tells me that all the circulation uh, had full strength I've measured the exhaust and it comes out to minus 38 or minus 40 so I'm not washing much out of there but I have consistently whether I pre-filled the block or not over years I do see some dilution in the in the material that comes out of the block, about 10 degrees or so. Um, so I'm not terribly worried about that. Uh, it's just a caution that if you're going to leave coolant in the block, uh, when, you when you pick your mix, um, expect to, the, you know, for whatever your lowest temperature is, that you have a little bit of margin to it, uh, because you may pick up a little bit and not hold full strength material in the block all the way through the winter. Um, a second note is I mentioned that I lost a little bit, um, probably during trailering. And I can tell you is that when I trailer, one of the things I find is you trailer the vehicle, you trailer the boat with, with the drive up, uh, you know, lifted. And when I get to the other end, when you tip the drive back down again, I get drainage out of the stern drive that you know, the stern drive had been down and drained before I lifted it to leave. So, I, again, I'm fairly confident that I'm losing a few ounces uh, based on dynamics of driving and going over bumps and things. So anyway, I think this process works. I think that uh, using, you know, I get, um, using this method of pre-filling the block is a good method. Um, I have had some comments that and actually my dealer did this the first year, which was there was no antifreeze in the block in spring when I opened it up after they winterized it. Um, in other words, it got prepped probably just like I did, but then it was the, the uh, single point drain had been opened and the whole system had been drained, and so there was residual pink antifreeze in spring, but you know I got three or four ounces out of it when I opened up the drain. And the thought process behind that is, if your antifreeze isn't, isn't strong enough, uh, air doesn't expand and freeze and break castings. So you could leave it empty and it might be safer. And once you've run the antifreeze through, the anti-corrosion properties, you know, you've coated all the inside metal um, with something that's got anti-corrosion compounds in it if you've picked the correct antifreeze uh, for engine storage. Um, personally, I prefer to leave the antifreeze in the block 
but um, there's a there's a fair um, there's a fair argument for the for the idea that you could go ahead and drain it and leave it drained over the winter. Uh, and again, the anti-corrosion properties of having circulated the antifreeze would still be beneficial to you over the winter. Your choice. That's how my latest winterizing uh, and, uh, and unwinterizing process worked. That's all for now.